everyone, we're here at the official Week Zero event in Nashua, New Hampshire, here with Team 3467 Wyndham Windup. They're going to tell us a bit more about their machine that we've seen on their Open Alliance thread and performing well out on the field. We're here with Sam, Lucas, Abe, and Arian, and they're going to tell us a bit more about some specific mechanisms. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. The Charged Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, finalysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash firstupdatesnow. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow. Um, as you can see here, we have a double-jointed arm this year. From the beginning of the season, we decided that double-jointed was the best option for us this year because it allowed us to reach all the different nodes and heights for the cubes and cones and it just it was simple because we were able to build a quick double jointed arm this year and get software to test it and get all the set points all set and ready for the official season. So for more specifics is each, each joint is powered by a 100 to 1 ratio from a max planetary with a Falcon and we, we're doing this this year with all Rev products so we have a max planetary powering it which powers it through these max spline sprockets as you can see here we have the max spline shafts and then the top joints the exact same thing with a 100 to 1 ratio here and a max spline sprocket all the way up there. We decided to do that this year because um, with Rev's new release, we decided to test out their new products, which they're working really well for us, and it's just overall the better situation for this double jointed arm. Um, to continue on this arm, we have a prototype right here. This is all in house stuff we had on day 10 of build season. We were able to finish this and have a fully completed robot for software to continue and test everything they needed. So by the time this actual robot was completed, they had all the code needed to be able to test it and put it on the actual robot and go on from there, so yeah. So in addition to this version, you guys also have a practice bot with a similar mechanism. Can you talk about how that was useful as well? Correct, so um, we decided to build two robots this year because of the um, resources we had and one robot was going to be used for dry practice, one was going to be used for software because those two are most crucial things on our team so people can get the experience they need driving and software can get all the time they need to practice and get ready for competition. Cool, thank you. Yep. So you have a pretty slick end effector on the end here. Can you, Sam, tell us a bit more about how you got there and what was the process like? So originally we started off with this claw right here, um, which was designed to hold a cone right here and a cube right here. Um, that way we wouldn't have any pneumatics on it. Um, we actually have for the wrist on this robot as well, we designed in this uh, pneumatic wrist here. Um, but one of the ideas we came across was using a geared wrist similar to 7407's wrist. Um, so in theory, we could have had a robot with no pneumatics. Um, but as you can tell, we've decided against that recently. Um, on this, we have a pneumatically actuated wrist or a claw. So um, at the closed position, it can pick up cones. And at the open position, it can pick up cubes. Um, and we have that run by a bag motor with a 7.2 to, uh, to 1 ratio. Uh, for the rollers. Um, as the robot's running, these um, rollers are constantly rolling. That way it uh, grips onto the cones and cubes a bit better so they don't fall out while we're um, moving around. Uh, we went through some other designs, some thrifty bot based um, claws, and we're going to continue going through different designs, especially after seeing a lot of teams here at week zero. Um, but so far, we we're very happy with this one. Um, we still have a little bit of tweaking to do because the geometry is not quite right. We're going to get a little bit more pinching here. You can tell we added this little makeshift 3D printed piece for, to fix some of our compression. Um, but we're still working out the kinks of it and we're happy with it so far. So if we were to want to pick up from the floor, we would just press our button while we are in our cone mode. And then we can go right back to stowed without dropping the piece. We can also intake right onto the hybrid node. And if we were wanting to do this with the cube, we were able to switch into our cube mode, which is signified by our candle, and it opens, and we can intake, and same thing, without dropping it. Yeah. It takes a very specific lineup to grab this cube, though. Do you have any new prototypes or anything new that you had an idea for during the competition that may give you a bit more touch it, own it capability? Yeah, so as you can see here, this is a ground intake. Um, we just finished assembling it earlier this week, um, so we weren't able to put on a robot because we didn't get to fully test it, but 
essentially it's a four bar like 971's 2019 intake and this, the four bar comes out and has a um, set of mechanism wheels right here to center the cubes up so the claw can grab it while it's right next to the bumper and we have a set of another dead axle right here to mock 95's intake because we believe that when you um, when the flange gets stuck between these two wheels we're able to untip it and um, pick up the clock and pick up because currently this robot can't pick up untipped cones so this intake was able to untip cones for us so we can just pick it up straight off the ground like that. Um, another thing is just, it's a, since it's a four bar we decided to motorize it because pneumatics, fitting pneumatics on such a big ground intake and such a small robot was almost near impossible so we decided to motorize this and once hopefully later on the season we test this we'll iterate it and have it on an actual robot and performing for the competition. Thank you. Yep. So your robot absolutely zooms across the field. So can you tell me more about your drive base and some of the capabilities there? Yep. So this year with the drive base, we realized the charging station was going to be a major choke point. So we decided to go uh, very small, like the smallest we've ever been. Um, and that placed a lot of constraints on electronics, but it does allow us to zoom, like you said, across the field. <laughs> so this year, we decided to go with um, Mark Four Eyes from Sword Eyes Specialties. Um, and so another thing we have is the battery. The battery is, this year we flipped it 90 degrees onto its uh, back um, and flipped all the uh, leads 90 degrees. Um, this was because we had smaller space, but um, it does stay in there. And then the breaker is also um, upside down here, although that is fixed on the other robot. Um, and then you also notice up here with the candle, we have um, different uh, colors. So purple signifies to the human player that we're picking up the cube, and yellow would be for the cone. So that helps a lot with um, communication. That's very smart. I appreciate that. Thank you. So speaking of code, you must have a lot of different ways that you control this. It's very complex. It's a swerve drive on however many joints the arm has. So can you talk a little bit more about your software this year? Yeah. So this year, we decided to go with a profiled PAD controller to move our arm. This way we are able to accurately and quickly go to our set point while also meaning maintaining stability in the movement so it's more fluid and a lot less like jerky like some a normal PID loop would be. Another thing we're doing that is a bit different from last year is we are using odometry based driving rather than just mo state module state based driving. This way it's constantly checking between the gyro and the drive base to see make sure it knows exactly where it needs to be on the field. In our auto, we use Path Planner to control our robot that does mirroring very well, and we've had a lot of success going to our set points. For balancing, we go to, we are able to get onto the charge station, and then we have a PID loop that can balance the charge station for us and with other partners on it. Thank you. You def you've definitely have some matches where you've been on the charge station and balanced. I think that's been one of the coolest things to see at this week's Zero event. Right. So. 3467, thank you. We appreciate it. And I hear you're the first seed at the event. It's pretty exciting. Yeah, I believe yeah. we are. So best of luck in elimination rounds and best of luck at your competitions as well this season. Thank you. Thank you. This video on first updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. The Charged Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, finalysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash firstupdatesnow. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.